When I teach economics, and I believe this is uh, common to uh, uh, most of us, understanding that even most of the students that we teach intro to economics to are not going to be economics majors necessarily, and certainly uh, very few of them will go into graduate, uh, graduate work in economics, the main goal is to uh, teach our students how to think like an economist. Uh, this idea put forward by uh, Siegfried and a number of his colleagues uh, in 1991 uh, basically boils down to consider any problem, um, strip it of its uh, uh, accessories and all the details that are irrelevant, uh, formalize the uh, elements of the problem, and once you have a theory or a model that explains uh, the problem that you're uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, deal with, then you need to test your theory against the data. So this is, um, our discipline has that formal uh, aspect based on calculus and math, but it also has an empirical component. If you just talk, uh, if you just discuss theories and models, you're just talking about economics. Not until you get the data and you start working with the data, you start doing economics. That is my take. So what is the problem with this issue, um, with this approach? The problem with this approach is the curriculum, in my, uh, in my opinion. The standard curriculum in economics, um, one or two courses in introduction, uh, two courses in intermediate theory, uh, some upper division elective courses on a variety of topics, and then we have uh, a methods course, a standalone uh, methods course, uh, stats, advanced stats, and then if your program supports that, some sort of capstone experience. My um, answer to this situation, or you know, how does this translate? What, why does this become a problem? Because these days, um, data that empirical aspect of what we do is available in so many ways through so many sources. We have tons of data at the, you know, easily accessible to us. This is the uh, um, International Financial Statistics uh, database from the IMF. So you can select countries, you can select concepts, uh, sources, time periods, frequencies, tons of data. You download it and it lands on your statistic and analysis software. In this case is e-views. So the problem with this is super convenient, but it misses, it skips this middle step of seeing your data. What is it that you're downloading? What are these series? What are the magnitudes of these things? What do these things represent? As a result of not seeing what is it that you're working with, uh, the magnitudes are completely crazy. Um, you don't know what is it that you're talking about. The, uh, the computer spits these numbers back, and the students put that on their, uh, on their papers. Weak output from, uh, from the uh, student's point of view also translates into um, weak student learning outcomes. So when we do analysis, when we uh, apply our rubrics of our uh, department's student learning goals to our students' work, we find that they tend to be pretty weak on um, analyzing quantitative information, explaining what this information uh, means. My response to this is, if data is the problem, if our students don't have a good grip on data, let's give them more. Not more courses of methods, not more statistics courses necessarily, but more data in our curriculum. Let's expose our students to the data of economics. So uh, to do that, uh, the strategy that I follow and I want to share with you today is this. Um, the uh, activities are basically data visualization and analysis exercises. Uh, the students are directed to collect and analyze uh, data. They have to answer a series of discussion questions based on their work. And the topics that um, the, uh, these exercises are related to are um, applications or uh, yeah, empirical applications of the theoretical concepts that we discuss in class. So let me guide you through, uh, uh, through one of them. I use these, uh, um, these examples uh, in uh, uh, my money and banking class. I'm also introducing them into my introduction to economics uh, class, and I use them extensively in my intermediate macroeconomics uh, class. But um, at this point, I just want to take you through uh, this one on uh, nominal versus real interest rates. So the first step, um, before launching the students into these data visualization exercises, let's not do this cold turkey. Let's spend the first day of class 
as we discuss the syllabus, let's take some time to actually explain why data is important in economics, what kind of data we're gonna be accessing, and what are the sources of, of that data. The library is a great place to start, um, to start that conversation. So once the students are familiar with where the data is gonna come from, let's approach a theoretical concept such as the Fisher equation. Nominal interest rate equals the sum of real plus the inflation rate. So we have this way of thinking, very abstract, very formal. If you tell me that I equals R plus pi, piece of cake, immediately I can figure out that R equals I minus pi. Done, that's all that I need to know as an economist. But our students necessarily don't think that way, at least not right away. So what I'm going to do now is do what I ask uh, my students uh, to do, open the uh, FRED uh, database website. So now we have the uh, real effective federal funds rate. So what is the story here? So we see that the federal funds rate in real terms has been decreasing, so it's been progressively cheaper. There are some periods in expansions when it goes up. It uh, goes down during recessions, goes up during expansions, recessions, and after the last recession, the real effective federal funds rate has been effectively zero. So it's not that it's becoming cheaper to borrow in the interbank market, it's this cost of zero. Moreover, if we change the scale of these things and if we narrow the, uh, uh, the time period, there are periods during which the real effective federal funds rate is negative. So what does that mean? What does it mean to have a negative real interest rate? So this stops being a theoretical question that you ask our students, so a negative interest rate. What does that mean? Well, this has been happening in the United States since 2009. So a negative cost of borrowing, the Federal Research System has been subsidizing, has been paying, has been bearing the burden, the cost, for banks to borrow from one another so they can maintain their operations. I can guarantee you that confronting our students with real data and applying a concept like nominal and real interest rates to real data in class or through an assignment makes a whole world of difference because all of a sudden this issue becomes physical, becomes real. They can do this themselves. This exercise uh, can be done in a couple of different ways. You can do this in a, as a class demonstration. You can assign the students uh, uh, tasks to complete where they go to the FRED database, pull the data, generate the graphs. As you come up with a data visualization problem, consider creating discussion questions that will guide the students' uh, analysis of the data. Those are some examples of questions uh, regarding real interest rates. Um, I use uh, a course management system where I post those questions ahead of time for the students. The students have to answer the, the questions before they come to class, and when they come to class, they come ready to uh, discuss their answers, and we have a discussion where uh, we put together different perspectives. Um, by combining different answers, we come up with a more complete understanding of what is it that, they, uh, uh, that the data says. If you're more interested, you're interested in learning more about this kind of uh, pedagogical uh, strategies, there is a free access um, a website called the Starting Point um, that I recommend you uh, strongly. If you're interested in teaching with Fred or in using other pedagogical strategies, please make use of that uh, website. If you want to read more about this specific use of uh, the Fred database, that article on the Journal of Economic Education is also coming out in, uh, uh, in September. Um, I'll be signing copies of that backstage. Uh, <laughs> probably not.